Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part six of this series where I'm breaking down the Dr. Jack Cruz, Andrew Huberman, Rick Rubin podcast. And today I'm going to be talking about Alexander Gerwich, the onion root experiment that he did, biophotons, and mitogenic radiation. So Alexander Gerwich is a very important person to this whole story. So he was a Russian and Soviet scientist, and he made multiple major contributions to the fields of biology and medicine. So he discovered the biophoton, and he also discovered mitogenic radiation. So all the way back in the early 1900s, he discovered the biophoton about 1912, 1913. Um, all the way back in the early 1900s, he was the first to hypothesize that biophotons can actually stimulate nerves. So he was 50 years ahead of Dr. Robert Becker um, when Becker proved um, the existence of the DC electric current in neurons and how it actually stimulates bone through the periosteum to actually cause the regeneration of bone, as I talked about in the uh, last video. He also was the first to experimentally prove that every single living organism emits biophotons, emits light, and specifically it's in the ultra-weak UV range. Um, this is very important for uh, not just quantum biology and life, but also for Dr. Cruz's work and the things that he can talked about in this podcast. And then lastly, uh, Alexander Gurwitch was the first to experimentally prove that UV light controls mitosis in all cells. Um, and we're going to talk about this more and show you how he did this in this experiment in the next slide. But so he originated the theory of the morphogenetic field. And basically the argument is that in embryogenesis, which again, embryogenesis is basically the process of development of an organism. So from the egg and sperm uniting and creating a zygote all the way up to a full adult. So that process is called embryogenesis. And Alexander Gerwich argued that in that process, the orientation and division of cells is rendered, rendered coherent by an electromagnetic biophoton field, which every single living organism has. And it's actually my hypothesis that how this works is that the biophoton field is actually probably generated via the atomic molecular organization of the uh, cells and tissues. And this, Dr. Mei Wen Ho in her book, The Rainbow and the Worm, she was a PhD, she actually talks about this a lot and lays a lot of the uh, connections that I'm talking about here out and how this probably actually works. And then additionally, so Dr. Cruz in this podcast talked a lot about how it's about the atomic molecular organization of cells, the AMO physics of organisms. He said that in this podcast, and he was actually getting most of that from Mei Wen Ho and her work, because um, I know he has read her work and thinks highly of her. And basically, um, it's been found that the atomic molecular organization is actually what generates the electromagnetic fields and is probably what is generating this uh, morphogenetic field and this biophoton field. That's what's actually controlling the orientation of cells and allowing our basically cells to continue to stay oriented so that we, you know, form basically, you know, the organism uh, that we are, you know, so basically there's been problems and questions in biology of, you know, how when, you know, this zygote is forming from a single, you know, cell all the way up to a fully grown adult human, how's, how does it know, you know, where to put the eyes, where to grow the eye tissue, how to grow the face correctly. And of course, things go wrong sometimes. And it's like, why do they go wrong when they go wrong? And basically, the real answer to this that we believe, um, that I believe, and that kind of quantum biology is kind of unraveling, and that amazingly, this man named Alexander Gerwitz, this Russian scientist, almost, you know, over 100 years ago, was basically showing that it really comes down to the integrity of this morphogenetic electromagnetic biophoton field, um, which is probably, that itself is actually probably created via the atomic molecular organ, organization of atoms, molecules, and cells within the organism. And so basically it comes down to this electromagnetic field, um, which is actually organizing the tissues and atoms and molecules inside the body to actually evolve and undergo the embryogenesis to form from a single cell zygote all the way up to a fully grown adult human or in any animal. Um, so this is basically the introduction to Alexander Gerwich and his work and the main things that he found, which he did some obviously extremely important work here. Um, and then the next slide, we're going to talk about the onion root experiment and how he not only discovered the existence of the biophoton, but also was the first to experimentally prove that UV light controls 
mitosis in all cells, which is such a critical finding as Dr. Cruz talked about in this podcast. So you can see on the slide, there's a schematic or a diagram of the actual onion root experiment, which I found and is laid out very nicely here. And so first I just wanna lay out some groundwork. So what is mitosis? So mitosis is cell division. So mitosis is extremely important for replacing damaged cells in just normal healthy tissue because obviously as we age, um, our cells get damaged and we need to undergo autophagy and apoptosis and repair or even completely replace uh, damaged cells. And so mitosis allows healthy cells to divide to replace the old damaged cells, which is critical for maintaining and regulating you know, the health of our skin, um, our organs, basically everything. So mitosis is obviously an extremely important process for just maintaining a healthy you know, body as we age. Um, but additionally to that, mitosis basically goes wrong in cancer. So it's also extremely important for understanding cancer. And so what we're gonna talk about here is the experiments that Gerwich did and his famous onion root experiment that was talked about in this podcast. So he performed a series of experiments in which he put an onion root next to another onion root and measured the mitotic division, so the amount of divisions that the uh, cell underwent. And he found that the side exposed to the other onion root had increased mitotic divisions as opposed to the side that wasn't exposed. So basically, he put this onion root right here. You can see my uh, little red dot. He put this onion root right here. And then you can see this other onion root. So only one side of the onion root is exposed to, to the other onion root while the other side of this onion root that they were measuring is not exposed to the to another onion root. And basically the side that was exposed to the onion root had much more increased mitotic divisions. It went, underwent much more uh, cell divisions than the side that wasn't. And he actually put many different materials, after he found this out, he put many different materials in between the two onion roots. And what he found was that glass actually blocked this effect of increased mitotic divisions but courts completely allowed it to happen. And so he knew even at this time, over a hundred years ago, that um, basically all living things were emitting these ultra weak UV range biophotons because he knew glass blocked UV light. And so he knew that all living things were creating these ultra weak UV biophotons and that ultra weak UV light was actually what was controlling uh, mitosis. So really just a remarkable scientist and findings over a hundred years ago. Um, so again, he realized that the rootlet was emitting the ultra-weak uh, UV light biophotons, which was actually controlling the increased cell division and mitosis. And so he named this uh, mitogenic radiation. And so again, Dr. Cruz references and mentions this man's work many times, and he references specifically this experiment many times. And he also talks about how, so about 50 years later in the 1960s, Fritz Popp, another uh, important scientist, he actually created a photomultiplier that could actually specifically uh, detect the what range uh, any biophoton, any light was in, any photons. He could detect the frequency and range that it was in, and he was actually able to confirm Alexander Gerwich's experiments using this photomultiplier to uh, show using the photomultiplier that the biophotons were indeed in the UV light range. And so this obviously has enormous implications because Dr. Cr Jack Cruz mentions it many times in a wide variety of different contexts. Um, firstly, obviously, if every single living organism, and this has been tested on many, many different organisms, and indeed, all of the different organisms tested do, you know, plants, different animals, humans, basically everything, all organisms emit ultra-weak UV light biophotons. And so if every single living organism is emitting, then UV light obviously cannot be just completely harmful and completely bad and should be completely avoided by humans. Obviously, UV light then has a significant and important place in human biology, and we really need to rethink the way that mainstream medicine you know, is looking at UV light and is telling people to just completely avoid it. So that's the first thing. The other important thing is that so we now know that UV light controls mitosis and controls this very important mitosis process, which is important not just for the regulation of health, but also for cancer. And so if UV light is important for controlling this process, then completely you know, ignoring it and avoiding UV light you know, could obviously potentially have extremely harmful effects. And so you know, completely avoiding sunlight is probably, and I certainly think is having very detrimental effects to human health. And this is one of the big reasons why. There's other uh, reasons too that I'll talk about in later videos. But this is one of the main reasons why. 
And so hopefully um, through explaining this experiment, you can see how important Dr. Alexander Gerwich's work was. It's incredible that he discovered all this over 100 years ago. Um, and also that you can understand um, what the biophoton is, what the mitogenic radiation is, and all the research that was done to explain this and be able to uh, prove this experimentally. So the last topic that I think you really need to understand this podcast and a lot of quantum biology and Dr. Jack Cruz's work is the mitochondria. The mitochondria are absolutely central to really everything that Dr. Jack Cruz talks about and to quantum biology. And really, they're just uh, central to the true root cause of all aging and chronic disease and health and energy. And I have uh, already created two really in-depth videos that really just explain everything that you need to know about the mitochondria. And I put the titles of them right here. I believe they're my first and third videos. And so if you watch those two videos, um, I'm not going to make another video in this series because I already made two very in-depth videos that really will explain pretty much everything you need to know um, about the mitochondria to help understand uh, this topic in depth. Um, so I hope you can find some time to go check those out as I think they'll really help uh, expand your understanding uh, of this very important topic. And then lastly, I just want to say thanks so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing as that really helps support the channel. And then I just want to say as a disclaimer that this video is purely for educational purposes and this is not medical advice. Thanks for watching.